I've been supporting myself with the camera in one form or another for over a decade now, and along the way, I've made a ton of mistakes, actually more mistakes than I could ever cover in one video. But now that I'm deep into this career, I've been thinking a lot lately about how much unnecessary suffering I caused myself early on and how much anxiety I would have saved my younger self if I knew then what I know now. Wait, I actually think I just quoted a Rod Stewart lyric there, which isn't something I thought we'd be doing on this channel, but here we are. I wish that Anyways, in this video, I'm gonna go over six of the lessons I wish I'd learned sooner in my career so that you can hopefully save yourself some of the trouble I've caused myself and stay focused on the stuff that actually matters. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years of working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. So I never actually planned on becoming a filmmaker, and all this pretty much happened by accident. I didn't go to film school, and I don't have a cool origin story of staring at back issues of National Geographic as a kid, knowing exactly what I was gonna spend my life doing. I spent most of my 20s as a full-time backpacker doing manual labor jobs around the world, and then as an English teacher in South Korea. I think I was 25 or 26 when I decided to take a chance on trying to become a full-time photojournalist, and then from there it was another two years I think before I even shot my first video clip on a Nikon DSLR. Maybe if I'd gone a more traditional route I wouldn't have been wrong about so many things, but I'd somehow doubt it. A career in filmmaking or photography is always going to be a bit of a weird one, and a lot of this stuff has to be learned the hard way. But if you keep these lessons in the back of your head no matter what stage of your career you're at, hopefully you'll be able to make it just a little easier on yourself so all the great stuff about this job can shine through a little more. Right off the bat, one lesson I wish I'd really learned sooner is this idea that we're somehow going to win at filmmaking one day. I guess most people approach things wanting to progress and get better, but when I was starting out, I used to think that if I could only hit a certain professional milestone, everything would make sense and I'd finally feel like I'd won. When I was shooting stills, it was working for the New York Times. I thought if I could just get that assignment and the byline, everything would be well in the world. But I got that assignment and that byline and even a couple different pictures on the front page of the paper, and surprise, surprise, nothing changed. I was still the same person with the same worries and after the initial like 24 hours of excitement wore off I realized I hadn't won anything. The same thing happened in video. If only I could work for National Geographic or Netflix or insert whatever dream client you might have then I'll have won the game. But I worked for both of those outlets multiple times each and again not all that much changed. The takeaway here is that there is no winning in filmmaking. There's no finish line to cross. You just keep making stuff and getting better and that has to be enough. I'm willing to bet that even Oscar winning directors wake up a few days after winning and look in the mirror and go, okay, what next? Thank you for that. So instead of basing your sense of self-worth on reaching some sort of imaginary pinnacle of success, instead focus on the journey, because really that's all there is. <laughs> Next up is something that I think is getting more and more common in the age of YouTube University, and that's the tendency for us as filmmakers to spend all our time studying filmmaking and working on the technical sides of our craft. But for documentary filmmakers, and probably any other type of creative person really, if you don't build up a deep well of personal life experiences that go with that technical ability, you're limiting yourself as a storyteller. Life experiences are what help us relate to other cultures, show empathy when dealing with other people, come up with weird and creative ideas for films based on the things that we've done and just generally inspire us to make art of all sorts. If you spend all your time thinking about cameras and taking courses, you're limiting your worldview and in the long term, holding yourself back. I don't think my success as a documentary filmmaker has very much to do with my amazing technical or artistic prowess, though I have worked hard at those things too. I think that the main reason that this path has been a good fit for me is because I came into it after spending all those years doing manual labor and traveling and learning about the world and the people in it. It's given me the ability to relate to all sorts to different people, be comfortable in tough situations, and keep a curious eye about what's going on around me. Sometimes I go through phases where I wish I'd started out a little sooner, so maybe I'd be a little further ahead than I am now, but then I realized that if I hadn't done all those things, I wouldn't have had those experiences and it just wouldn't have been worth it. So by all means, dedicate yourself to filmmaking and learn all you can, but don't forget to actually get out there and live too. And in a similar vein, the next lesson on this list is something that sort of happened because of all those life experiences and how I got into this work in the first place. 
And that's that filmmaking isn't really a job in the normal sense. It's a commitment to a lifestyle. A job in the normal sense of the word makes me think of something that you punch in and punch out of, something that has fixed hours and the comfort of a regular paycheck. Filmmaking, and even more so documentary filmmaking, isn't like that at all. Sure, there are call times and wrap times and projects come to an end, but it's really a lifestyle more than anything. Emails come in at all hours, some shoots take you away from home for months at a time, and then other times you're at home for months with nothing on the books. You're always thinking of new ideas for projects, working at your computer at strange hours, polishing up an edit, networking with other filmmakers who often become the core of your social circle. I've got tons of friends who do all sorts of different jobs, but there's something about people in the same industry that makes for tight bonds and shared experiences and creates connections that can sometimes be hard to find in normal people. So I'm not saying that you should exclude anything or anyone that isn't filmmaking, but if you're looking for a quote unquote day job that you can leave at the office at the end of the day, filmmaking isn't really that for better or for worse. And the deeper you commit yourself to that lifestyle and make more and more connections in that world, you're probably gonna find yourself constantly measuring your own career against others. And that's dangerous, which leads me to the next lesson that I wish I'd known earlier. Comparison is the thief of joy. <laughs> That's a quote from Teddy Roosevelt, I'm pretty sure, but others have said similar things in slightly different ways. You'll see filmmakers on Instagram who look like they're living the dream while maybe you're not getting gigs. You'll look at someone else's YouTube channel that's gotten big and think that you must be falling behind. Or your friend will book a huge job for a dream client and you'll wonder why they didn't call you instead. This is totally normal and I struggle with this constantly and I'm always comparing myself as well. But it really will suck the joy right out of your life and your creativity. You'll see a super talented 21 year old winning awards and think, am I too old to get started? Or maybe you'll see a film that's just so good you think I'll never be able to make something like that. Maybe I should stop now. And those kinds of thoughts are toxic because we're all on our own journeys and you have no idea how things will play out. Like Stan Lee didn't publish his first comic book until he was almost 40 despite working in the industry since he was a teenager. Superman had been out for over a decade at that point and I can only imagine it would be hard not to be constantly wondering if he would ever be successful in comparison. But we all know that he stuck with it and that it actually turned out pretty well for him in the end. Social media makes these kinds of comparisons almost inescapable in our lives, but as much as possible we need to focus on our own path and not base our worth on if others are doing better than us because that doesn't lead anywhere good. Next up is something that took me a while to figure out, especially coming from a photography background where it's pretty much focused on the individual, and that's that filmmaking, when it's done well, is a team sport. I've said this before in a few different videos, but it's very, very hard to make it alone in this business, no matter how talented and motivated you are. Working with other people is one of the joys of this industry, and when you bring a bunch of really talented people together, the results only get better. Colleagues refer you to other jobs and take over jobs for you when emergencies come up. Watching how others work also gives you ideas on how to make your own work better. I feel like maybe a little too often people get stuck on the idea that they have to be a solo filmmaker, maybe because most of their jobs up to this point have been in that way one man band formula, but it's going to be so much better for you in the long run to build up a filmmaking community around yourself rather than to live and work in a vacuum chamber of your own ideas and methods. I know a lot of people watching might be booking smaller jobs right now where maybe there isn't a budget for a big crew or maybe you've never booked a paid job at all. That's all totally okay, but please trust me that time invested in growing a community of filmmakers is well worth the investment. So maybe shoot a spec project and reach out to other people at your level to help out or volunteer and work for free on other people's projects or set up networking meetings with people you respect, buy them a coffee and then pick their brain. There's so many ways to make connections and they don't all have to be about self-promotion or locking down new gigs. There's no formula for how to make them, but not making connections is gonna hold you back. All right, so we're coming down to the last lesson here and this one is really important and that's that you absolutely need to work on building yourself an emergency fund. Nearly all filmmakers, documentary or not, are freelancers, and there are gonna be so many ups and downs on the way that you never see coming. You might work 20 days a month for a year, and then COVID hits and everything stops. When things are good, it's easy to think that they'll stay good and that you should use all the money you've been earning to buy a bunch of gear. But when the slowdowns come, and they will come, if you're overextended, it can be a disaster. Filmmaking is all about the long game, and not to say something super obvious, but if you go broke and have to sell your gear or get a job because you can't weather a storm, 
storm, you're not in the game anymore. This is personal finance 101, but building up an emergency fund to cover you for at least three months should be higher on your priorities list than buying new lenses or lights or whatever, in my opinion. When COVID hit, I didn't work for over six months, and if I'd been going paycheck to paycheck, I'm not sure what I would have done. But since I had an emergency fund in place, I was able to hunker down, cut my spending, and wait it out until things rebounded. Then I made restocking that fund my top priority and didn't buy anything camera related until it was back at a comfortable level. And after going through that experience, I'm never going to be caught without an emergency fund again. Emergency funds aren't for new cameras and they're not for self-funding short films. They're to help you survive when you crash your car, your house gets robbed, or there's a global pandemic. So build them up and leave them to do what they're meant to do. If there's anything that will give you peace of mind and the security to stay in this for the long term, it's this. Easier said than done, I know, but start squirreling away whatever you can and then don't touch it because when you need it, you really need it. Okay, so there we go. Six filmmaking lessons I wish I'd learned sooner. I mean, hey, I guess it's good that I learned them at all, but if you can save yourself some heartache by learning them now, then I guess I've done my job at this channel. Hope that video was helpful and I'll catch you back here for the next one. See ya.